Hey there, how are we doing today? As you can tell, we got a super long box, and that means that we are probably looking at a Seiko Presage. And, um, well, they do see them, you see them with the, I guess, in the prospects too, and sometimes Seiko 5 in the longer boxes. But when you have this special wood box, um, and there you have the booklet and stuff in the cardboard, um, it's kind of folded up under there. But this special wood box means we're taking a look at a very special Seiko Presage. You can see Presage Limited Edition right there in the gold foil writing. This watch is a limited edition, and um, this is part of the Seiko Presage Craftsmanship Series. This Craftsmanship Series celebrates Seiko's 110th anniversary Um you know, Seiko's been around for over 140 years now. This year, they're celebrating 110 years of wristwatches. So, watch making. And here you go. Um, this is inspired by the Seiko Laurel. And uh, while the one we saw um, the beginning of this year was more of a true... Um, well, I wouldn't say true because the dial has the power reserve and stuff, but it was a closer um, <clears throat> to the original Laurel. This one is kind of more of a modern reinterpretation. This one is the SPB 401, and you've got the enameling on it, and the enameling looks stunning. Um, there's a good leather band on this watch. Uh, you know, that's probably one of my pet peeves with Seiko. For a long time, they, you know, their bands weren't up to snuff as much. But um, they've really done better than they had before. So you can see there you got the display um, display case on the back there. And um, it's just neat to see the movement and it going there. And here you can see um, the craftsman is Mitsuru Yokosawa. And he's the person who enamels the watch. So uh, it's a nice personal touch to have the artist's name on the enamel dial there uh, on the on the tag for this watch because you know he did a lot of work to get this done. Um, it's nice to appreciate um, our talented artists who do these types of things, and it really kind of celebrates uh, Japan's legacy. And here um, in the box, I got this cool uh, shot here. And it just, the watch feels like it's kind of steps back in time a little bit, but then it's got an eye to the future here. Um, I just like the way it looks overall. Like the other one is a fun, funky watch. Um, the one that looked like the the pocket watch that was strapped um, to like a, a strap. And, you know, like the first wrist watches. But this one here is definitely much more contemporary, and this is one you could wear uh, more often. And this is a limited edition of 1,500 pieces worldwide. Um, the enamel dial is just something to look at. I'll move it back and forth here in a minute, and then we can really appreciate it. The original Laurel um, didn't have that uh, power reserve on it but they're sticking the power reserve on you know most of these enamel ones um, like you see it also in the porcelain one as well um, I guess it's just the design aspect they're going for uh, to me it makes the dial look a little busier I would have kind of rather not have it there I mean I can understand where you want to see how many hours you have left on your watch but I don't think it's really necessary to have something equivalent to like a gas gauge on the dial of your watch. You look at those old ones, um, the old laurel and everything, the clean white face with the enamel. Oh man, that looks good. But you know, this is a fun watch. It looks good even with the power reserve. I do like it as well. Um, it's, it's kind of the perfect combination of looking forward and looking backward at the same time. The thickness of this guy is 12.8, which isn't too bad for a dress watch. A little bit on the thicker side being a dress, um, but you know, the most Seikos are kind of like that. 
I guess that makes them a little bit more um, a little more tougher for getting a little beaten up here and there. Um, here we can see the thickness there. You've got the marked S on the crown. Um, just a good looking watch. You got the special polishing on it. Um, looks good. And I'm trying to move it around so you can see how the enamel and how the dial kind of sinks in a little bit. And it sinks in around the different dials. You know, the power reserve and the, the one on the bottom there. And like the laurel, you've got that red uh, 12 on there. It looks really cool. Another thing that doesn't get appreciated on a lot of the Presage is the stunning blue hands. I mean, the blue hands are almost like a perfect blue uh, sapphire. It's like, it's rich, it's legible, it's easy to read. Um, and it, it kind of gets unsaid a lot, you know. The enameling is awesome. I don't want to put this one on my wrist. Um, keep the band nice and straight. So I'm just holding it over here so you can kind of get an idea. The watch is a 40.2 millimeter diameter. So it, kind of in the middle. Not too big, not too small. Um, it might be a little big for a dress watch. But it's more of the thickness with that that makes it feel bigger. Um, but my wrist is a 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can see, um, it's not really overpowering, but that white dial um, really kind of gets your attention to it. Now this one is water resistant. It is water resistant um, for 10 bar or 100 meters. and has a magnetic resistance as well. Um, it's a leather strap with a three-fold clasp. And the leather is sourced from LWG certified tanneries. And um, we're not taking this in the dark because there is no loom on this Seiko Presage. The Seiko Presage. Um, just a great looking watch. If you get a chance, um, check it out.